iOnCAD designs in a fundamentally different way to traditional 3D software. If you open up iOnCAD and try to use it like a traditional system, you won't benefit from everything iOnCAD has to offer. This video will cover some of the methodology differences in iOnCAD, so you can benefit from knowing them while you're learning. These are the differences that enable you to save vast amounts of time when compared to using a traditional system. First, let's look at the 3D scene. This is where you design everything in iOnCAD. Whether you're designing one individual part or an assembly of a million parts, you can design it all in the same 3D scene in one file. In a traditional system, you generally make an individual file for every single part in your assembly and then assemble them together later with mates and constraints. Whilst you can do this with IonCAD if you want to, it's generally much slower and it's much faster to design everything in the same file. You get to skip a lot of the main constraining process and it makes file management far easier. Another important part of IonCAD are the catalogs. On the right hand side here, you can see I'm going to drag and drop a block out into the scene. What we've done now in a traditional system is the equivalent of going in and selecting a plane, then creating a sketch on that plane and drawing a rectangle and then extruding that sketch with an extrude feature. In IonCAD, these steps have just been done in the background for you. So you can see we do have a part that has a block which is an extrude from a cross section. And at any stage, we can right click and edit that cross section. So while the shapes in the catalog may seem simple, they're infinitely customizable and can be made into any shape you like. They're built to be a starting point to help you save time when compared to a traditional system where you'd have to just start with a sketch. In this case, I'll press Ctrl Z to undo and show you how the push-pull handles work. So almost all the shapes in the IonCAD catalogs have these push and pull handles available. And you can even create custom shapes and add push and pull handles to them yourself as well. This enables us to really quickly and easily resize things. For example, I'll type 100, and then this will automatically change to the other handle where I'll type 100 again. And then I'll type 10 on the top handle. Shapes in the catalog are also available as negative shapes. So for example, we can drag and drop out an H cylinder here, which will create a cut. In this case, I'll type 10, and then I'll size it down to a 10 mil cut. Now I'm gonna activate the tri-ball. This is how you position things in IonCAD. It enables you to skip a ton of mating and constraining that you do in a traditional system. It's a patented tool that IonCAD's developed for decades. You can see here, I'm going to drag with the middle point with the tribal active, and note you can activate this with the Q key or the F10 key. I'm going to drag this and just snap to points like midpoints or endpoints, etc. I can then move along an axis, for example, this axis, and we'll move by 20 mil, and then move along this axis by 20 mil as well. You can also press the space bar and use the tribal as a reference object. So instead of creating a reference plane, which you practically never need to do in IonCAD, which is worth noting, because uh, that's something you may do often in traditional systems, you can use the tribal as a reference plane. So now that the tribal is white, it can be moved around without moving the shape. So in this case, I'm gonna move it to the midpoint there. You can see you can snap to the midpoint like that, or you can hold down the shift key and it'll automatically snap to the midpoint or the end point, depending on where you are on the line. Now I'll press the space bar turn the tribal active and I can then right click on this internal handle and just select mirror link. That's going to create a mirrored link of that hole to the other side here. Another way of doing a similar thing would be to rotate this around. So this isn't a cylinder because it's a square we can do it in the same way. I'll press the space bar. Now I'm going to move the tribal to this midpoint and then I'm going to lock down this axis. Now it can only move along that axis. No matter what we do, it's only going to move along that. And so now I'm going to drag it to this midpoint. But because it's locked to that axis, it's going to now be at the center of our square. Now I hit the space bar again. I'm going to lock down this vertical axis. And I can right click and drag and rotate this. I'll let go and select link here. And I'll link two of those at 90 degrees each. 
All of these are linked, even though they were done in separate patterns, they're all linked. So we can change any of these at any time and the rest will automatically update. We can also, of course, unlink them at any stage if we want to. Now let's drag and drop out another part. So in a traditional system, generally you'd create each individual part in its own individual file and then made and constrain them later to put them together. In IronCAD, you can design in the context of your assembly. So everything can be designed in the same context, enabling you to get a much better understanding of your design and to save a lot of time. So for example here, if we drag and drop out with the left mouse button, then hold down the shift key and just snap this to that edge, you can see that's now joined it onto this part. It's used the same material and it's added to the existing material we have in the scene. So you can see it's still one part, now just made up of an extra block that we've added. Alternatively, if we right click and drag and drop, we can select a drop as a part. Dropping as a part, we'll add it as a completely separate shape and separate part. So you can see here, we've now got a brand new part. So this can be made out of a new material, for example. So we've now got the plate here and this brand new part, all in the same scene. So instead of in a traditional system, for example, making that part in an uh, individual file by itself and then bringing it in here and mating it to this top surface, we can just put it there like that. Now, for example, I'm going to right click and edit this part, select its cross section and delete it, and then use the project tool to project the cross section of our earlier part. Now it's going to change our new part over to match that cross section. I'll make this one 10 mil as well. And maybe on this part, I'll blend or fill at the edges. Press Control Alt to select behind in that case. Like so. Now these are just really simple shapes from the catalog that we've used. But it's worth noting there are more complex shapes available as well. For example, we'll drag and drop out a cylinder and put this in, into the center here. And then we'll drag and drop out the H spin here. So that's a cut of a spin shape. Instead of an extrude, it's a, it's a spin. So we can drag and drop this out onto the center point up the top here. And we can now push and pull this cross section if we want to, to customize it. Or we can right click and edit it. Again, the goal is skipping steps in traditional software so you can save time. In this case, we're going to create a cut here and we'll just click OK now to finish and it'll convert that shape into what we've just drawn. There are more shapes, for example, like the spheres here, uh, etc. And there are many more shapes available in other catalogs we have. Another thing to note is that because you're designing with all of your parts in the same file, we have another tool available or another option available when you're dragging and dropping out shapes, which is to drop them as an assembly feature. Extremely useful for cuts. So for example, let's say we want a hole to line up between all of these parts and we don't have to go into each individual part and create the same hole. What we can do is right click, drag and drop an H cylinder out in this example and we're going to choose to drop as an assembly feature. In this case, the scope is going to affect all the assemblies under the selected level. It's worth noting you can customize the scope so it only cuts some parts and leaves others, for example. Clicking OK, you can see that that's now cut all of that away. What I'm going to do is customize the size of this a little bit, make it a bit smaller, make it, and then make it a bit longer as well. And you can see it's now cut through everything in the model. So that's something you may not be familiar with coming from a traditional system because they're cutting through multiple separate individual parts. Another example here is assembling these parts. So I'll select them and right click and just select assemble. Now we have an assembly of those parts, just like that. And you can see now 
that assembly feature is grouped in with this assembly, so it's not going to cut other assemblies, just this assembly that we've, we've chosen for it to be part of. It's an assembly level feature. Now what I'll do is activate the tribal, hit the space bar, and now I can move the tribal like I was doing previously. I'm going to create an offset whilst the tribal's white here of say, uh, let's say 250 mil here. Then I'm going to press the space bar again to lock the tribal down when it's blue. Lock this vertical axis. I'm going to right click and drag and select link here. And I want to create another, for example, six of these or seven of these, seven more. And the angle is just going to be 360 divided by eight. Most boxes and areas in IonCAD, you can also type formulas like this one, which is obviously just going to give us even spacing because there's going to be seven more, which means the total of eight is 360 divided by eight. Clicking OK now, that'll create a linked copy of all of those around our model there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we do have many other catalogs available. One I'll show really quickly is the sheet metal catalog. Opening up this sheet metal folder from the starter catalog here, so we're still in the starter catalog, we're going into the sheet metal folder. We can drag and drop out some stock into the scene. And now with sheet metal stock, you'll see that the push and pull handles are still available. And you can, of course, still right click and edit the cross section if you want to. But with sheet metal, there's no uh, height handle because the sheet metal stock thickness is defined elsewhere. And of course, with the sheet metal part, you want the stock thickness to remain the same for that entire sheet metal part. It's all folded from the same thickness of material. So we can right click and go to part properties and then go to select a new stock. I'm going to choose this 1.5 mil aluminium. You can, of course, customize the stock list here and choose any size you'd like, or just type in the size you'd like as well. Now I'll size this sheet metal part to 200 by 150, for example. Then I'll drag and drop in an outbend here and size this. In this case, I'm going to size these approximately, but you can also right click and either edit the bend stock length or edit the distance from point. So for example, define the length from a different point like this base. Say, so well, from the base, you want this to be exactly 50. I'll drag and drop out another out bend here. And out bends allow you to design using your outer dimensions. We do have in bends and normal bends available too. But you can see by designing with the outer dimensions, this is now out to there. It's also worth noting that at any stage, we can keep everything in the file, but just show what we're working on. So I'll just right click and do hide unselected. That will just show our sheet metal part, even though everything else will still be there. With this done, we're now going to create a box. So we'll go to the sheet metal tab here. Click on add mitre. I'll then select the bend shapes like so. And then click the straight edges box. Select this box here and then click OK. That's going to create our mitre. Even after creating that mitre, we can of course still customize this. So for example, let's stretch it out to 250. Or we can go and do other things. Let's, for example, go in and customize this bend and change its angle. And at any stage with sheet metal that I had, you can of course right click to unfold it and get your flat pattern and bend lines. When you take this into a 2D drawing, you'll of course also get your bend annotations and bend directions coming through as well. For example, alongside these lines, it will say this is an upwards bend at 90 degrees and it's three mil. Now I'll right click and fold that back up. And then we'll right click again and select show all to show all other parts in the model. That's just a really quick example of how the sheet metal uh, catalog works there. You can also use, for example, the cut shapes with the sheet metal catalog as well. And at any stage, it'll then use that cut shape to create our unfolded part. So of course, now if we unfold it, it'll have that cut in it as well. Next, let's, let's look at a, the drawing process quickly. So one thing you may be wondering is that if we're designing everything in the same file, how can we create the drawings? Because it's going to create a picture of everything, theoretically. Well, in IonCAD, because IonCAD is a unified design environment, the drawings are set up to enable you to create drawings of individual parts or combinations of parts, all from the same one 3D file. 
So here I'll go into a drawing and select to create a view. Now you can see I can create a view of everything in my model, the whole scene or whole uh, entire assembly. And so for example, maybe I'll create a top front right view of that and place that into my model or into my drawing. But I can also go into my standard views here and I can select the part slash assembly to project. So for example, let's say we just want to create a drawing of this assembly. We'll click apply and you can see now we're creating a drawing of this assembly here and that's all. So I'll create a front view here and a top view maybe and then click OK and we can press the arrow keys to increase the size of that for example if we want to and of course add any dimensions we like etc. Another example is creating the drawing of the unfolded sheet metal parts. That'll, that will automatically be added as a configuration for unfolded sheet metal like you can see here. So we can click OK and place that view. I'll increase the view size a little bit so you can see the bend lines and bend dimensions available. And in this case, I've added them all to one sheet. Just as an example, but you can also have multiple sheets. So for example, uh, in a real world drawing design context, you may have a different sheet for every part and then another sheet for, for example, the cut list and a overall assembly uh, photo and so on and so forth. And worth noting, of course, that any changes whatsoever in 3D will be automatically reflected in 2D for you as well. So let's go in and change this sheet metal part. I'll put in a dimension there to show how long that currently is. And that's the length after these two cuts in. So it's a relatively uh, unimportant length likely in this scenario, but the example is to show you that that will change in a moment. We'll delete this one and move this up here. Now we'll go into our sheet metal part and resize it. We can select this symmetrical handle to then size symmetrically if we want to as well. And let's make it 300. Now going into our drawing, the drawing will automatically update, ask you if the 3D file has changed, so do you want to update the 2D drawing? Yes, we do. Click OK, and it'll run through and automatically update those for you. There are many things to learn in IonCAD, but the most important thing to remember when getting started is that IonCAD does things differently to traditional software. And it's worth getting a great understanding of that difference so you can benefit from it. We're always open to hear questions and we do demonstration videos for people's specific products as well. So if you have any questions at all, don't be afraid to send us an email or give us a call and we can help out.